public art doesn't always have to be a big, loud, splashy thing. It can just be the same kind of art that you would find inside of a gallery, but existing in a public space. I'm Courtney Levine. I'm Laura Randall, and we're the curators of Commuter Biennial. I think so much of what we're doing with the Commuter Biennial is both literally about people who commute throughout Miami, either for work, but also people who commute to see art, that there is sort of this travel component that exists that's not always easy and accessible. How do we activate these little pockets? So thinking about places like Hialeah Gardens, where so many people live, or commute all the way from Homestead, let's activate these places that need more visual arts. I also think a lot of what motivated some of the decisions for what was gonna be included in the show revolves around having works that really were site specific. Lily Martina Lee, she does a lot of work that is inspired by various elements of true crime and in particular unidentified cold cases. She found locations where bodies had been found throughout Miami-Dade and so that was a way to sort of make it very specific to Miami and sort of unpacking the individual details about that specific case. With someone like let's say Nice and Easy, who is this artist duo. We looked for locations for billboards that were heavily congested with traffic. They graded two billboards, each that have somewhat slightly suggestive imaging, and it says, to enhance your drive, call 833-I'm-Easy-2. And I think most people's knee-jerk reaction to that is, that it might be a hotline for something that, that might be a little CD, and you call the number and there's this bait and switch element because you call and you're directed to a recorded message, that's actually a mindfulness meditation. We are nice and easy. You can be nice and easy too. And one that's specifically geared towards calming ourselves and centering ourselves and sort of letting go of tension while we're driving in our car. Please keep your eyes on the road throughout this brief meditation. Juan Landa Verde, he's an interesting artist to commission because most all of his work has to be site specific. In this case, he was looking at the way urban sprawl has reached Homestead. So people living there now aren't necessarily working in agriculture, right? So they're commuting to downtown Miami. And how does that change the landscape? It's also a really beautiful, interesting piece. You have this contrast of this bare field around it, minimal but highly effective. Virginia Overton down in Palmetto Bay. So she's an artist who I worked at Socrates Sculpture Park where she had this work called Untitled Late Bloomer. And it was really important that we get that piece in the show. It has a lot of Florida native aquatic plants in it. So this iteration of this sculpture is unique to South Florida in that way. It does have a bit of that this post nature feel, but also sort of like what will happen when we're gone as natural elements sort of grow back into things. And I think that's something that you might get a sense of with David's work as it develops as well. This sort of, this link between the natural and the man-made environments and that the, the natural environment is always there and it's always going to be there. These are people not really intending to be going to an art museum or an art gallery. They're just trying to get to work <laughs> or get home. I'm David Brooks and I'm working on a project for the Commuter Biennial, and the project that I'm working on is called Studs and Bycatch. So we have this house-like structure, very identifiable. It won't be clad with sheetrock or anything, it's just a metal structure. And then we have a series of taxidermied fish forms, which are all found in the local waters here. As this structure is kind of sliding off of the pontoon barge and looks like it's sinking, because it's gonna be situated in the middle of the Blue Lagoon, floating. As it's kind of sinking, there's a swarm of fish or a school of fish kind of writhing through it, which it's a little bit ambiguous as if the structure is sliding down and the fish are gonna be taken down with it, or if the fish are really thriving and kind of being held up in a, in a kind of um, a bay answer in kind of a celebratory state, like a trophy fish. And so that ambiguity is important for me so that it's not just a kind of hitting one on the nose of like man, man bad, nature good, but actually it's much more complicated than that. Uh, and it's, it's neither of those things, it's just our reality. So really the only place you'd be able to see it is as you're speeding by on the 836. That was one of the challenges, that it's not 
people that are purposely going to go look at art. So it's kind of the, the unknowing um, art viewer, the, the involuntary art viewer. Also, um, they might be stuck in rush hour traffic and stop, but they might also be speeding by at 70 miles an hour. How do you create a, a gesture uh, that could only be seen from a car, from the highway, that both could tell a story in a matter of three seconds, or be a kind of roadside attraction that kind of makes a person think a little bit twice about what's going on. Okay, having done work before in the public realm where people really are not intending to have to engage in artwork, um, sometimes, it, for me in the past, it's been the most fruitful of them all because it, um, it really lets people have um, a window of opportunity they would have never thought they would have had. A lot of the things that we've done with this show are about making us more aware of the spaces around us, and I think that this is just one of the most exciting ways that we're going about doing that. Yeah.